In this video, I'm going to show you how you can put anything you want into any video using Pika AI's Peak Edition, and you can do some incredible things with it. I'll show you loads of different awesome examples and how to get the most out of it. Okay, let's get into it. So at the time of recording this, Pika recently released Peak Editions, which allows you to pretty much impaint anything from an image into a video and people have been getting extremely creative with it. So to start off, I'll just quickly run through Pika's plans that they have. Now, the good thing is they have a free plan and you do get to use Peak Editions in that plan. With 150 credits, I think Peak Editions only uses 10 credits per generation, so you'll be able to generate about 15 videos, which I think is definitely worth trying out. And as you can see on the homepage, there are loads of Peak Edition videos and you can check them out and you can even choose to reprompt, which will then add that video and the image into your prompt box, which is pretty cool and will allow you to get generating straight away. Whenever you create a new peak edition, they always have this default prompt in the box, which does a pretty good job, but shortly I'll show you that you can get better results with custom prompting. And one of the downsides is that it only uses five seconds of video. So if you give it a 10 second video, it will only use the first five seconds. And you can only use the turbo mode at the moment with peak editions. And if you come to advanced options, you can choose the aspect ratio and put in negative prompts. I've been generating loads of different examples for you to check out, and I'll run you through what the best practices are, as there are definitely some things you need to look out for when using peak edition. So for this first one, I just wanted to do something simple. So I just took a quick video of my hand and I wanted a character to interact with it. This is where Mid Journey came in really handy as I was able to generate loads of different characters so I could put them in my videos. I would say if you're doing this method, then definitely prompt the character to have a white background as I think it just helps overall with putting them into the video. So this first one, as you can see, it's pretty cute and it worked pretty well. It's not perfectly inside my hand, but it's added a nice bit of shadow on the hand and I'm fairly happy with it. And this was using just the basic prompt that they give you. Now what you can do is click reprompt and I'll give it a different prompt this time. And I've just prompted it with the cute creature is on my hand. Just something simple, but I just want to see if it's any different from the base prompt that Pika provided. The good thing about the turbo mode is that the generations are pretty fast. And here's how that video turned out with the different prompt. And I think it looks pretty good. It has added an extra smile onto the creature. I think it looks better placed on the hands than the previous video. And here's another example. So I generated this image of a dinosaur coming out of an egg and I placed it in my hand. It looks pretty good. It's even added in some nice contact shadow onto my hand. So using the same video of my hand, but this time I wanted an eagle to land on it and it generated this video which is pretty sweet. Now this looks like it really hurts my hand as those are some sharp talons. And in this video here, I just filmed a tomato on my table and added this cute creature. And I prompted it with a cute creature is dancing behind the tomato. So this was a test to see if it could mask out the tomato and fit the character behind it. And it's done an incredible job at fitting the character behind the tomato. So as you can see, the contour of the tomato and even this little leaf is perfectly intact. And the character is moving behind with really nice animation and feels like it's on the table. I'm really impressed with how this has turned out, as it would probably take a long time to mask out this tomato if you were doing it by hand. And then I wanted to see if I could get things to sit on this chair. So I did a quick video around this chair and used this image of Pikachu and prompted it with the cute creature is sitting on the chair. And I'm blown away with the result. It's got a nice 3D rendered Pikachu sitting on the chair perfectly. It even keeps the perspective right as I move the camera around the chair. And again has some really nice contact shadowing on the chair. And here's another version, but with the base prompt that Pika give you. And it's quite different. It's got the more cartoon 2D style Pikachu, but it still looks pretty good. And then I did another chair shot, but outside this time, as I wanted to see how it would deal with different lighting situations and just a video with a bit more going on. So here is Pikachu sitting on the chair outside. And again, it's done an incredible job. Pikachu is in contact with the chair, as you can see, 
and even leaning on the table. It's very cool. And then I prompted the little jelly creature to sit on the chair. And this is where I noticed something that blew my mind. If you look closely, you can see that Pika recognized that this is a glass table and it is see-through. So as the creature moves behind it, it actually adds the creature behind the see-through glass, but it makes sure that the rim of the table is solid and that you can't see through it. Then it got me thinking, could I get a character to be reflected onto the glass table? So I shot another video, but closer to the glass table and added in the image of Pikachu and prompted it with creature is dancing slowly on the glass table. And it generated this, which is insane. Look at the reflections of Pikachu on the table. It is perfectly mirrored to the animation that it's doing on top of the table. This is incredibly smart. I'm just so impressed with how this has turned out. And I tried it with other images. So I've got this cute sleeping cat on the table and it looks great. And I even found a baby bear sleeping on the table as well. So just a quick tip for when you're filming videos to use, make sure there isn't loads of fast moving action as Peak Editions really struggles to get the detail in fast moving objects. As you can see here, my hand is getting blurred out and it doesn't look that good. So I think to get the best results, do slow movement and keep the camera moving slowly or as still as possible. Just a quick note here, if you're enjoying this video, if you could like and subscribe to our channel, that would be awesome. Okay, back to the video. And for another test, while I was outside, I decided to film the hills that I can see in the distance, and I wanted to see if I could get anything to be generated behind those hills. So using Pikachu again, I used that video of the hills and prompted it with giant yellow creature is standing behind the big hill. And I got this, which nailed it perfectly. It looks like a massive blow up Pikachu is sitting on the hill. And the lighting looks incredibly realistic. And here's that same hill video, but with Godzilla in the background. And it looks really cool. It's really interesting, as you can see in this one, it's put Godzilla in between the hill and these houses here. It's definitely got some smart training to notice that there are layers in the video. And in this one, I gave it a more 2D style image of Godzilla, and it did a really creative video with adding in this flat black Godzilla into a realistic video. And it looks really unique. So definitely try using different art styles in your realistic looking videos, as you can get some really unique looking shots. And I tried something weird by adding a macaron image, and it's created this awesome looking floating giant macaron in the shot. And to be honest, it looks incredibly realistic. The lighting on it looks incredibly natural. Now this is a shot which I call the reveal shot, which I think is really fun to do in peak edition. So I took some videos of me opening various doors, and to start with, I've got this shot of me opening my microwave, and it's the jelly creature again who's hiding in the microwave. It does an incredible job at tracking in the character to make it feel like it's on that plate and it's not moving all around the place. It's really cool. And here we have a Pikachu inside the microwave with some really nice animation. And I found a cat sleeping inside the microwave as well. And I found a little baby bear as well. So make sure to watch out when you're opening your microwave. And then I got this video of me opening my front door. And this time I wanted to try adding a person into the shot. So I've got some images of characters from films. So I decided to focus on some Terminator characters. So in this one, I've got an image of Sarah Connor while she's firing a bazooka. And as you can see, when I open the door, boom, she's firing a rocket into my house. It's quite rude, but I think it turned out pretty well. And I tried the same video, but this time I used this image of Arnold Schwarzenegger in the Terminator poster. And this is the result. So instead of being behind the door, he's with me and then he attempts to go out. But then he decides, nope, I'm coming back in. And I've got to say, it's got some really nice natural motion to it. And this was another attempt, which was a bit closer to the prompt. And then for another reveal shot, I've got me opening the toilet door. And so here I have the Terminator on the toilet with what looks like to be one leg inside the toilet. And then he's kind of sitting outside of it. I'm not sure if robots know how to use the toilet properly. 
and I generated this blue alien-like character in mid-journey, and he's just chilling out on the toilet. I think the animation on his head and eyes are incredible. And you can get some really creepy ones. So I generated a bunch of images of different ghosts and used them on the toilet video. And as you can see, they get pretty weird. I love how some of them, the characters just fly into the scene and it's really effective. And this one actually freaked me out. I used this image and then I put in the prompt, scary ghost comes out of the toilet. Now in my mind, I had it emerging from inside of the toilet, but it gave me this. And I think it's very, very creepy. The way it just hangs down and stares at you. Yep, this is pure nightmare fuel. Now this is a different kind of reveal shot, but I wanted to show something inside of the mug. And I placed a cute sleeping cat inside of it. The cat must be cramped in there, but it looks pretty cozy. Now let's have a look at putting yourself in famous movie scenes. So I've got a few different clips from different films. So to start off, I've got this scene from Titanic, where Jack is at the front of the boat, and I decided to put an eagle in it. And the eagle's just chilling out next to Jack. But the only problem is the next scene, the eagle is gone. And this one is hilarious. I actually put this image of myself in and it's added me in waving next to Jack. While quality doesn't look that great, it did a good job of putting me in the scene. And that same eagle made an appearance in this Jurassic Park shot as well. I prompted the eagle to land on his shoulder and it looks great. Even though we can only see the eagle's feet, it does look pretty realistic. And in this one, the eagle flies down onto the jeep. And we have some scenes from Forrest Gump. And again, the eagle is chilling out on Tom Hanks. And then I decided to add myself into the shot and I got some pretty weird results. I wanted myself to sit between them, but it looks like I merged into Tom Hanks. And now we have three legs. So it doesn't always come out perfectly me smiling and holding a banana, and me just chilling out with my arm around him. Now this one really impressed me as I did prompt to have my arm around him, but it looks incredibly natural and it doesn't look like I've just been pasted in there. So you can even hold props. So this image of me holding my water bottle, it's added into the scene. I also had a bit of fun with this scene from The Dark Knight when the Joker is walking out of the hospital. And in this one, he's trying to detonate the bomb as I'm just waiting. And then we both run off. And I even managed to use a picture of Joaquin Phoenix's Joker from his film and have the two different Jokers walking together. And to be honest, I think it looks awesome. It's a very cool shot. As you can see, with the peak editions, you can get some hilarious results. Another great thing you can do in Peak Editions is use it to replace things in the image. So in this video, I'm just holding a wooden spoon and swinging it around. And then I used this image of a flaming sword, put them both into Peak Editions, and this is the video it made, which I think did an incredible job at placing the sword in my hands. And here's another version, but with a different weapon. So definitely have a play with changing props in the video as well. There are loads of really talented people on social media messing around with this Peak Editions. And one that I love is from John Finger. As you can see, he high fives the character and then even pans down to show this cute little creature. And what's really cool about this video is that it's longer than five seconds. So my guess is that he films a long video and then cuts back and forth in between the real footage and the AI video and you can kind of see the quality change as it does it. But it's a really smart way to do longer videos. All right, so we've reached the end of this video and I urge you to go and try out Peak Editions. It's incredibly fun to use and can result in some weird and wonderful videos. I feel like this is just the start of this technology and it will definitely get better. Feel free to comment down below if you have any tips or tricks for Peak Editions. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell if you haven't done it already. And if you would like to watch one of our other videos, then feel free to click the image you can see on screen.